I feel I should lead with a, a list now of what could go wrong. Um, that isn't the, the topic. Um, we're an island nation. The sea has always been really important to us, and it remains as important as ever. 90% of our trade comes in by ship or goes out by ship, and we get roughly a third of our energy through oil and gas from offshore sources. There is a lot of new technology which is going into ships, which will let us do more things, do them more safely and more efficiently. And there's a lot of research being done at UCL in a whole bunch of different areas, which will feed in towards that goal. There is a drive, quite a strong drive, to get the people out of ships. We can, do, we can start to do that by reducing the number of people, by remote monitoring, by having smarter systems which don't require human intervention um, present on there. But realistically, we are going to have completely unmanned ships within the decade. There are some huge technical problems to solve there. The big challenge is safety. Even if we have a ship that's remotely operated by a human, we need to make sure that it doesn't become a floating hazard in the event that we lose communications. And ships are pretty big. A ship floating around in the sea uncontrolled uh, is, is a risk to anybody else that happens by anything it gets carried on the current and crashes into. So the challenge is safety. And the big challenge is navigation. We need a ship to autonomously navigate, follow a route, know where it is, avoid collisions with things, including things which might be moving, things which might not be on the charts and might not be able to announce their presence. So we have work ongoing being developed and trialed. Um, Springer, on the uh, slide behind me, isn't as fast as Robo Racer, but it's, it's doing a lot of things. It's not tied up to that boy. It's navigating autonomously past it, getting very close. It's having to do sensor fusion. It's having to combine inputs from GPS to tell it where it is, from radar, from cameras, um, and combine those, even if they conflict, if there's a system failure, into uh, uh, following the regulations to avoid collisions correctly so that other ships can predict what it's doing. That's quite easy for a human, or a well-trained human. It's really difficult for a computer. If we go smaller in scale and we go underwater, that opens up a whole new range of capabilities and it brings a whole pile of fresh challenges. Underwater vehicles are really good at looking at things, looking for things. That might be for oceanographic research, uh, inspecting pipelines, mine clearing, uh, or looking for missing airliners. And we're working on making them better at that, using virtual reality telepresence to allow the operator to feel that they're actually there to improve their situational awareness and make the drones just better. It's also hard to communicate with things that are underwater, so we need them to be more autonomous. We're looking at applying machine learning principles to underwater vehicles to make them smarter, better able to operate autonomously, and to work together so that several vehicles can operate without human intervention. We're also looking at making ships more energy efficient, reducing the amount of carbon dioxide they put out. And that's really important. Globally, the shipping industry puts out about as much carbon dioxide as a medium-sized European country. So if we want to drive global carbon emissions down, as well as on land, we will have to drive down in ships as well. We're going to see more ships that use wind power. We're going to see more ships that burn cleaner fuels and burn less of them. We're even going to see ships which can change their shape on the fly to improve the hydrodynamics mid-operation. And ultimately, all of these separate technologies will need to be integrated together into a design. And that's, that's one of the hardest parts. It won't be as obvious as those other technologies, but in the future, we will be designing ships differently than we have done before. Whether or not virtual reality gives us the minority report style interface that I've always wanted, we're going to be doing something differently. There is going to be a lot of invisible technology uh, which lets us do things that we couldn't do before, uh, design ships in different ways. New mathematical models, new methods. We'll design new kinds of ship, uh, ships to service wind turbine fields at sea, to mine the seabed. Perhaps we'll even see people permanently dwelling on the oceans. So between all of these technologies, all these areas that we're feeding into and will integrate, these technologies will let us do more things at sea, do them more safely and do them more efficiently. And we'll change our little bit of the world. <laughs>